Hey, so it's gonna be another Kirk Cam video today, and I know what you're thinking, like, oh hell, not another Kirk Cam video. Trust me, this is a good one because we have a little story to tell today. Okay, it's actually a big story. The reason why I do the Kirk Cam videos is I kind of like the perspective of it. I think it, it's a little bit more interesting than just mounting the GoPro up on the windshield and looking at my ugly mug. Okay, so what is story time about? Well. Story time today is going to be about a car that's only been mentioned a time or two on the channel and honestly, it really needs to get mentioned. I mean, this is the video it deserves. I'm surprised I haven't made a whole video on it before because it plays such an important role in my life and how I got to the point where I am now with cars. And that would be my first car. So this whole video is gonna be the story about my first car, my 1993, Ford Taurus GL. Let's begin. Okay, so we're gonna go back to a simpler time. A time where life was a lot easier. Oh boy, was it. This goes back to about 2007, I think, I believe. I was just of the age, 15 and nine months to start the process of getting my license. At the time, my parents, we had two vehicles at the house, uh, both which my parents used for their daily commutes to work. So there were really no additional vehicles for me to learn in. Therefore, I kind of needed my own. It was inevitable that I was going to start driving, so my parents opted to pursue the purchase of my own car sooner than later. So I do thank my parents very much, even though it wasn't anything special. And quite honestly, at the at first, I was really not happy with the idea. But beggars can't be choosers. And uh, you know what? I think a, a used car is perfect for a person starting out driving. You know, every person who I've known who had a new car started out driving, uh, they just didn't seem to respect the vehicle. You know, I don't know. I, I just think it is better for someone starting out driving and have a used car. Now that doesn't mean it doesn't have to be a newer or safe car, but nothing like extravagant. Like, you know, I didn't get a Mustang for my first car or whatever. So, and it's probably the best you, you don't quite honestly, you work your way up the ranks. <laughs> you know, you start in a regular car, you work your way up, but hey, whatever, I digress. That's a story for a whole nother day, but, uh, Back to my teenage years. So yeah, 15, nine months, go through the process, um, you know, get my learner's permit, all that good stuff, start driving school, yada, yada, yada. At the time, we lived at a different house in the same neighborhood that I moved from in Maryland. Uh, and, and the neighbors next to us, um, we knew at that time as well. So we ended up moving in between two people we already knew later on. So that was the house we were in. So, you know, that kind of clears up a little bit of weirdness in the storyline here. So anyway, that neighbor um, is a mechanic. And like most mechanics, you know, for a little extra side money, he would, uh, you know, buy cars off of people, you know, usually get them pretty cheap because they needed some work. You would do the work and flip them, you know, hey. So he always had a surplus of cars available and uh, one of those cars happened to be an older Ford Taurus. You know, his son, which was my friend at the time, was about to drive as well. We were set to, you know, do everything at the same time together. He already had a vehicle lined up for his son and he, he reached out to my parents. It was like, hey guys, your boy's gonna be driving soon. I got the perfect thing for him. Uh, let me know if you're interested. Long story short, went to go look at it the car was in pretty good shape, honestly, for for an 18-year-old car or so it was at the time. Your typical elderly owned car, low miles, uh, well, actually, kind of. Eh, not really, actually had it over 100,000 miles, but still, it wasn't really driven all that much, okay? So it was in pretty good shape. Like when I looked at the car, you know, at first, the thought of having <laughs> a granny mobile you know, grandpa special for Taurus really was not exciting me whatsoever. You know, starting the drive, 
but when I got there and looked at the car and I seen it, I'm like, wait a minute, this is going to be mine. I'm going to be driving this car. Whole mindset changed immediately. So I'm like, all right, let's go with it. Let's, let's roll with it. You know, my parents said, okay, all was good. So the car really just needed a few things. It needed tires, um, needed, what else? It did, you know, the fluids changed, just some maintenance stuff. It didn't really need all that much. Um, and uh, the only other thing we did was put new struts on it, which made the car ride really nice, you know, a nice new set of Monroe struts. So the car rode pretty good, uh, quite honestly. So, you know, it was pretty much all safe and ready to go for a new driver. And as safe as a 93 Taurus could be, at least, right? I started learning to drive in the car. Once I had enough time and I was ready to actually do uh, the driving test to get my provisional license, we set up the appointment with the local DMV, made the trip up in my car, and I took my test in that car, and I passed it with only one exception, because, you know, it, you're in a parking lot, you're nervous, you don't really think about certain things. The only thing I didn't do, and the only thing they marked me for, otherwise it had been a perfect score, was, you know, the stop intersections they have in the, in the little parking lot that they do the test in, I didn't look both ways. You know, if it was on the street, I would probably have done that because I'm not thinking to do that in a parking lot with no other cars, you know? It's kind of one of those things. Um, so that was the only thing they marked me on. So needless to say, no problems with that. Got my license that day, went on, went drove home, and had the most magical moment of my early adult life. And that was taking the first drive in my own car all by myself. You talk about a euphoric feeling. You talk about being on cloud nine. That is probably one of the best feelings. Other than maybe some other things you do in life as well, you know what I mean? A little hokey pokey, you know? But other than that, it was probably one of the best feelings that I had. Um, just being able to drive wherever you want, at your own leisure, no one around at your own pace no one's telling you what to do you know what you have to do and it was the most magical feeling i just didn't want to stop driving that day i just wanted to keep going and going and going until i couldn't go no more oh my god i knew from that day forward it was it oh i was in trouble fast forward just a little bit not really too long into my uh endeavor here with my vehicle and of course you know i want to start doing stuff to it i want to start making it faster i want to start upgrading and doing all this stuff and whatnot so here i am up in the middle of the night googling how to make your car faster because you know i didn't really know too much at the time i know a little bit like i watched all the shows high rod tv all that you know but I never actually worked on anything. So other than just seeing, I didn't really know. Like I knew what things were, but I didn't really know how they worked together. I didn't know what did what. So this was all new to me. So I'm Googling how to make things faster, how to make more power, this, that, and the other. And being a young person, not having that much money, working part-time job, and uh, you know, thankfully at the time, I really didn't have any major expenses all paid in for by parents you know that's the benefits of a teenager right so I had a little extra money that I could set aside and start putting it in into the car for modification so you know I really wanted more power I'm like okay well what's the best way I can get more power um, you know I was reading about intakes you know at the time there weren't really too many other brands going around the biggest brand was K&N you know everything was K&N Especially when you Google articles and stuff, there's always K&N filters, K&N intakes, K&N this, that, and the other. So I'm like, all right, K&N's the best, K&N's what I need, that's gonna get my car more power. Awesome. So I go up to the nearest advanced auto parts, I buy a K&N panel filter, cause you know, I'm like, well, I can't really afford the intake, but I'm like, oh man, but they have a, a filter that goes in the same place as a normal filter would. That's gonna give me more power, and I'm not gonna spend all that money. So I'm like, all right, that's what I need. So that's what I ended up getting. Um, and I got a little cheap like uh, socket set because on those older Tauruses, 
uh, the air box was, the top lid was fastened to the bottom lid with uh, like a bolts and stuff. Not with the little flippy clip things that you find on most cars. So that's what I did. So of course, when I got there, I started ripping things apart because I wanted to know how things worked. I wanted to see what did what. I wanted to get my hands dirty for the first time, working on my own car. So I'm sitting here wrenching away, taking the air box apart and everything under the hood of my Taurus. You know, I, there were some leaves and stuff all down. I cleaned all that stuff out, make it all look nice, you know. And I'll slap that freaking air filter in there and I'll put it all back together. And I'm like, all right, this is it. I hope I didn't break anything. I hope I didn't mess anything up. So, you know, get in the car and I flipped that key on and that car started up. And I was like, holy shit, I did it. I didn't mess the car up. It was all good. Woo, yeah, let's roll. So I'm like, all right, I'm a master mechanic now. So now that the car's running good, I wonder if it has any more power. So, you know, I'm going double checking my work. I'm going up to the engine, making sure everything's good and looking around. You can hear the air getting sucked in. It was like a much louder induction noise. You can hear it. You know, the air just being pulled into the motor. I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, that's some horsepower right there. I'm on it. This is going to be freaking great. I'm going to really light up the tires, man. I was ready to roll. So I shut that hood. I got in that driver's seat and I set off for my first drive with my K&N air filter. And <laughs> you would have thought that I put a damn supercharger or like a 50 shot of nitrous or something on this damn car. I was like, oh. Holy crap! You know, the car just felt like it had so much more power, and I was like, oh my god, this thing's fast, you know, because it was really the first time I've ever really been in a car, right? I don't know what fast is. Like, that was fast to me at the time, my perception of fast. And uh, I'm like, oh my god, this thing's quick. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna get myself in trouble. And I'm getting all freaking excited over this. And honestly, any power I probably did feel was just because the paper air filter that was in it probably needed to be replaced a long time ago and it wasn't <laughs> um it was clogged up with you know leaves and debris and all this crap honestly the biggest difference was probably because of that um but i didn't know better at the time you know i'm looking on the box of the can air filter added horsepower added you know mpgs better throttle response and so i'm believing the box word for word not knowing any better and I mean, that was, the, <laughs> that was the best thing ever putting that in and, and feeling the extra, what you know, the extra uh, power or whatever it was, maybe it just was with placebo, I don't know, but that feeling of doing work to your car and going out and, and perceiving and having a perception of a positive, um, you know, change in how the car is, that was a, beautiful feeling and uh you know that was the end of that that was what started it for me the bug that we all have and um that was a turning point for me and my endeavor with cars for sure with that said of course the mods did not stop with uh with the intake there and it uh continued on with a few other small things so um, you know, I'm like, all right, cool. Now that I got this extra power from my intake, I want some extra sound. Let me put a muffler on it. And that's going to give me some horsepower too, right? Yeah, of course it is. Better flow. Why wouldn't it, right? You know, I'm reading all this stuff and whatnot. Of course, I did a lot of research, you know, looking at videos at YouTube, you know, and surprisingly, there are a lot of people who decided to put mufflers on their four Tauruses. And, uh, you know, after plenty of research I settled on uh, a Flowmaster 40 series muffler which uh, honestly on that car sounded pretty good I wish I had a sound clip of it I don't I'm gonna throw in a sound clip from uh, from someone else's video um, so you get the idea if you don't know so here's that <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it didn't sound too bad considering all things. It definitely 
made it more fun and interesting to drive. You know, um, it wasn't loud, it just louder than it was stock. So I'm like, all right, cool. Now I need to make the car look better. So, you know, it had steel wheels on it. You know, you put your plastic hubcaps. And I'm like, all right, well, I don't have money for rims, but maybe I can go and get some hubcaps. So I get these like black hubcaps to go on it. Mind you, the car is green, so it actually didn't look bad. And, uh, you know, I put all that on there and what not and my father you know reason why i have a lot of detailing experience because growing up my father was a professional mobile detailer so you know i watched him a lot and i you know caught on to a lot of stuff uh early in life on how to detail cars but wasn't nowhere near as experienced as i, as I am now and at the time um you know he cleaned up the whole car polished the paint took out all the swirls and scratches and waxed it and that car actually looked really nice. So, you know, it looked clean, it was fresh. I made sure the interior was clean, I kept it clean. I had my black ice air fresheners in there, you know, making everything <laughs> smell like good. Oh, you know, you know how it is. With my new black hubcaps, I had the muffler. It had a big oval chrome tape on it. And of course, you know, being young, you had to have a little bit of thump in the trunk. So I got these SPX cheap, freaking subwoofer things from uh pep boys had that all wired in and whatnot you know i was whew, man i tell you that was the car right there man i was certified badass in this car i tell you what and i tell you i had fun in that car too and of course i'm young i'm starting to get in the cars other young guys are in their cars you know you start running into people on the roads you know and they hear you got a car with exhaust you know how that goes and i'm pretty sure you know where that was going so all of that started taking place in my four tours and it surprisingly would keep up with cars that they must have been just pure junk if a if an old Taurus was able to keep up with them. At this time, you know, I pretty much had done everything to the car I could do. After all that, we eventually moved into our new home, which is the home that we, I, you know, I just left from in Maryland, the one you've seen most of the videos at. And then, uh, you know, at that point, I was getting a lot more into things. Uh, the only other thing I did to that car was I ended up getting one of those, you know, tornado um, little insert things. You put it in the intake right before the throttle body and it's supposed to spiral the air and whatever. Um, believe it or not, that actually made a difference on that car. Uh, and, and how I can tell you this is because I experimented around with that thing on multiple different cars. And what I've noticed was it made a bigger difference. Like it made actually a noticeable difference on older cars with like um, single plenum intakes rather than more modern cars with like dual runner intakes with a you know variable intake runner system. On cars like that, didn't make a difference. On older cars with a set runner, it actually seemed to make it a little bit more um, punchy. Uh, so, you know, whatever, there's a whole thing on whether those things work or not. Uh, but my experience seemed it did make a little bit of a difference, at least down low. The only other thing I did was remove the uh, snorkel and the baffles from the intake box and left a big open hole in the side. And I replaced the accordion rubber tube from the air box to the throttle body with a uh, straight piece of of intake piping it was like spec you know the specter intake piping with two silicone couplers and clamps that didn't seem to really do anything with power maybe a little bit helped with uh, power up top maybe um, but that did actually help a lot with sound and you got the nice throaty intake sound from that so it actually complemented the exhaust really well and it was made it a lot more interesting to drive but aside from those mods, uh, the only other things I did was some weight, weight reduction, removing the spare tire and all that. And that was it. That's all I did. So with all the things that I did do to that car, um, you know, the intake mods, filter, <laughs> muffler, a little bit of weight reduction, all that, I did time the car at one point. Now, of course, this was before any GPS timers were available, like the draggy and whatnot. So I only had like a, you know, um, a lap timer thing 
on my phone or like a stopwatch thing you know you start it and then hit it again when you stop it so you know i basically mashed the pedal hit the button start it and when i got to 60 i hit it again and it was like in the 10 second range which i guess wasn't terrible considering all things um you know i was to set the word on fire there with that and i mean honestly it was probably maybe a little bit faster because that's such an inaccurate way of timing things so maybe it was faster maybe it was slower i don't know but we're gonna say 10 seconds zero to 60. it wasn't meant to be a race car so that kind of brings me down to talking about the car itself and what it was so it was a 1993 Ford Taurus, and unfortunately, it wasn't an SHL, not even an LX. No, sir. It was bottom of the barrel GL. Now, actually, it actually wasn't a base mod, like a base base. It had some options. If I remember correctly, it had the driver's seat was power, but only sliding forward and backward. The passenger seat was fully manual if i remember correctly it was cloth seats bench seats split bench with uh folding armrests had cruise control it had power doors power locks power windows and i do believe at that time it was an option to have the bumpers painted to match the body color or you could have or you could just leave them like just regular black plastic so it also had painted bumpers as well so it had some options. It wasn't completely bare bones car. It, you know, it was the basics, right? It was definitely a first car. No getting away from that whatsoever. It wasn't anything to be too excited about. But so yeah, 93 Taurus GL, automatic, of course, column shifter, old school. And uh, you had the three liter Vulcan V6. Um, a lot of people, like this engine it's a really good engine um you know they can live a pretty long life that was back when when cars actually lasted more than 200,000 miles <laughs> but what didn't last on that car was the atrocious four-speed transmission oh my god a little three-speed with overdrive that transmission that came in those cars was freaking terrible and they'll they'll go out way before the engine will most times so yeah that was the only downfall to that car really um but that engine had a lot of torque to it um it would actually get up you know it had a lot of like mid-range power like around 2500 to 3500 it was a lot of power there like that's where it really felt the best it was still a fun car to drive nonetheless you know it made noise it still had some you know had a little bit of get up and go to it. it wasn't much it was definitely enough for me at the time so unfortunately i don't have any video of it i used to have a video somewhere i probably lost a long time ago on one of my old phones of the exhaust and whatnot um i never really i mean this was before i really cared enough to post any of this on the internet you know it was really before social media got to the point to where it is and i didn't really care to make youtube videos at the time um it wasn't on my list of things to do and the only pictures i have available now i know there's probably a couple more i can find but i think all that's on memory cards that are still back in maryland the only thing i have now are these two photos right here of the car you can see how it looks these were taken and posted on the early days of facebook and you can see the car actually didn't look too bad it was in pretty good shape like i said not bad for what it was it wasn't a complete clunker or some junky car it was pretty decent and the car really was so important for me because not only was it the first car i had that i modified but it was also just my first car and it was what i took my driver's test in to get my license it was that car that gave me the freedom i have now to do what i do and it gave me the experience of doing what i now consider a true passion it all started with that car needless to say that car played a huge part in my life and now you're probably wondering well what happened to it now well, that's the sad part of the story the car didn't leave my hands because i sold it or whatever 
No. Fortunately, my first car also gave me my first experience in an accident. Not by me, uh, I was rear-ended. So it was just like one of those dumb luck things. I was on my way home. I was on my street about to be home. I would have been home in one minute. And this crazy lady, she was tailgating me the whole way down the road. And, I, and honestly, I wish I would have known better, but I didn't. I was still a very new driver at the time. But what had happened was, I was coming down the road. There was a few cars ahead of me. Uh, there was a, like, I think two other cars ahead of me. And the speed limit on that road was 30. And if I wasn't doing the speed limit, I was somewhere between 30 and 35. You know, um, and somewhere along the way, who someone in front of me was not paying attention. The car in front of the other two cars stopped. And I guess the car behind that car wasn't paying attention and stopped quickly. Well, so did the car behind that. And then of course I did. And you know how that is, that chain reaction effect. And then before you know it, you're just slamming on your brakes. So, you know, I hit my brakes pretty hard. And well, you know, the, the lady behind me who was tailgating, yeah, this is why you don't tailgate because she couldn't react nowhere near quick enough and just bam, slam the ever loving crap out of my car, just ran the back and supposedly she panicked and hit the gas pedal again and hit the car again. The whole back of the car was pushed in. It was bad. It was, you know, ruptured the fuel tank. And you know, this is the, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, dumb luck. So it happened right in front of our local volunteer fire station. So of course they all seen it, came out, made sure everyone's okay. They were able to, to put stuff in the road um, to clean up the spill of the, of the fuel leaking and then the radiator uh, coolant and all that from the car that hit me. And my friend, there was on the other side of the road, there was a little um, convenience store, little deli. My friend, the one that I went to driving school with and we got licensed together, he was walking out of the store and saw it happen too. So he witnessed it happen. The freaking fire department <laughs> was there. I mean, it was like, are you kidding? And all but not even a quarter mile or half a mile from home, I would have been home. That's just how that goes. That's my luck right there in a nutshell. But, you know, I wasn't hurt and I had a passenger, my best friend, my roommate now, you see her in a lot of videos. Uh, yeah, she's been, she's been in my life a long time. <laughs> she was in my passenger seat, she was fine. Just a little bit of whiplash, you know, older cars, the airbags didn't go off, thankfully, because probably would have been more hurt if they had been. Um, so it's just the belt's locked and you kind of just get a little bit of whiplash. So we were sore. Another one of my friends came by, you know, he had a, a SUV, took some chains, hooked it to the front of the car and towed it home. You know, insurance came out, looked at it, of course, total loss. I mean, they compensated pretty well, um, you know, and it was actually that money that I had saved and put aside. And that was the money that bought me my five liter coupe. So, <laughs> you know, it, it's just, it's just interesting how the world works like that. So yeah, it was my first car. I learned to drive in it, got my license in it, had my first encounters on the road with other drivers, you know what I mean? Fun runs in it. First car I modified, first car <laughs> I got in an accident with, first car I lost to an accident and it gave me the money to buy my first Mustang. So you see where this all went. So I thought this would be a really fun story. Just kind of go in um, to about my first car and where it has led me now. You know, it had a pretty big impact as you very well can see. And it is a big part of my history here on this planet and what has brought me to where I am now. So gotta thank that car so dang much. Um, I do miss it, it was a cool car because nothing will ever beat your first, right? You know what I'm saying? First car, first person you lose your virginity to, 
it's all the same, right? <laughs> so, man. Anyway, don't mind me. Let's sort of wrap it up here for this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, please go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for the next true car enthusiast video.